Wakizashi's Tea House. Konnichiwa, Minasan. This is Gray from Wakizashi's Tea House over in Japan. How are you doing? Are you good? I'm Genki. Today I want to do a review of the Wheel of Time TV series, episode 5, which is called Blood Calls Blood. Now, this was another very good episode. We get a lot of character development again. We get some nice focus on Steppin, the warder, from the last episode. We get to know more about him. We see his relationship with Lan and with the Aes Sedai. We get some crazy torture scenes, quite gory, which uh, kind of surprised me. There's an amazing wolf attack in, in the episode as well. We see more of La Rand and Matt. Let me just find another image. Matt is struggling. There's something going on with Matt, and he's, he's you know, he's uh, he's having a hard time in this episode. And this picture is from a great scene where we see the false dragon Loghain being brought into the city, pretty through the streets, and something really creepy, really sinister happens. Speaking of sinister, who is it? Eamon Valder. He's he's Valden. Is it Valder? I always get the name wrong. Let me double check. Yeah, Valder. The leader of the White Cloaks, the most sinister actor in, in the series who I really like. He has a great scene in there. We see a bit of magic and we see uh, just a little bit of action. But overall, a good episode, quite moving. And for me, the acting has been really good and it really stands out in this one. Okay, anyway, enough from my brief introduction and review. We're going to go on to the story summary and the breakdown of the episode. So there will be spoilers from here on in. Okay, keep watching. Here we go. The episode opens on a beautiful snow-covered landscape and the camera pans down and we see a ceremony is taking place. It's Moraine and the surviving members from the battle last episode. They're burying the dead. There's a really interesting image here, the circle, the wheel. And you can see the dead bodies are wrapped up in white sheets. Then it cuts to the credits and we're told it's one month later. The surviving members are travelling to Tarvalor, the White City, and they have Loghain, the fake or false dragon. He's kind of tied up and looking weak and defeated. Next, we get a beautiful view of Tarvalon, the White City, with a mountain in the background. That mountain reminded me of Mount Doom, do you know what I mean, from Lord of the Rings. And Matt and Rand are walking, they're getting close to the city. We can see another view here, the, the tower, the White Tower. And Matt is looking sick, he's not looking well. Um, Rand is fine. So they get into the city and they stop at an inn. Moraine, Lan and Nynaeve are in the White Tower now and Moraine's talking to Nynaeve. She's warning her, like, beware of the power of the women in the White Tower. Don't underestimate them. Perrin and Egwene are still travelling with the travelling people, or the Tinkers, and they're getting close to the White City when they're stopped by a band of White Cloaks. They call themselves the Children of the Light and their sinister leader, Eamon, was it Eamon Valder, he says, well, he sees Perrin and Egwene and remembers them from last time. And he says, bring them to me. Instead, the Tinkers refuse. They lock arms and they stand against him, dropping their weapons. And he kind of laughs and he says, oh, is it the way of the leaf against the way of the light. And then he punches the leading Tinker woman in the face and a big fight breaks out. Perrin and Egwene manage to run away with one of the travellers, but they're chased by three white cloaks on horseback. The, one of the white cloaks hits the traveller, knocking him down, and then they surround Perrin and Egwene. They're captured. Oh no! Back to the city, and Rand is in a small library, I think it's part of the inn, when he meets what looks like an ogre. Kind of unconvincing ogre, to be honest. Um, he corrects him, he says, I know I'm an ogre, and his name is Loyal, and they, they talk for a little bit. He's talking about Rand's hair colour. He's like, oh, your your hair is red. It means you're um, you're an IL, an IL. I don't know what that means. Then Rand hears like a big commotion from outside, and he goes rushing outside, and he sees Loghain, the false dragon. He's being led through the town, and Rand catches up with Matt, and they're watching the the dragon. And there's a really creepy scene where the dragon sees them. He sees Matt especially, and he starts smiling, and then the smile turns to like a maniacal laugh. He's laughing at him. And Matt's like, I, I don't want any of this. Like, if I get any of this power, you know, I'm, I'm never going to be like that. And he's basically asking Rand to take care of him, to, you know, maybe to put him out of his misery if he starts showing signs of the power. Yeah, good scene. Kareen's warder, Stepin, pictured here. He's mourning her loss. She was the green Aes Sedai who was killed in the last episode by Loghain. And he's wearing white. 
he takes her ring and he goes up to, he finds like a basin of fire and there's like this kind of lava going around at the bottom of the basin and he drops the ring in and it dissolves. It's a, it's a touching scene and it's well played by the actor. Okay, then we return to the White Cloak's camp and Egwene and Perrin, they're tied up. Perrin's being tortured by Valder and Valder's demanding that Egwene use her power, do some channeling or he, he's going to kill Perrin. It's quite a gory scene. We see Valder like using a knife on Perrin's back. He's, he's cutting lines in his back and Perrin's getting angrier and angrier. And then in a strange moment, his eyes kind of gl glow golden just for a second. What does it mean? Back at the White Tower, Stepin, now drunk, goes to see Nynaeve and he says he wants some herbal tea from her to help him sleep. You know, he's suffering, he's still mourning. Then Nynaeve, with help from Loyal, the ogre, or Ogier, remember him? She gets to meet up with Matt and Rand where they're staying and Matt is in a really bad way. He's in bed, He's he's got like shivers, he looks like he's possessed by something. Then Nynaeve and Rand sit down and they're talking about Egwene. Of course, Rand is missing her. He says, I haven't seen her for a month. So Nynaeve tells Rand a story about Egwene when she was a child. She got struck with a, a bout of a really bad sickness called, is it break bone fever, which usually kills people, but she survived it. So Nynaeve calls her unbreakable. She says, don't worry, she's unbreakable. She'll be fine. Back at the White Cloats camp and Eamon Valder is torturing Perrin again. He's demanding that Egwene use a power. So she, she does, she tries really hard and only a small flame, a small like kind of power flame comes out and doesn't do anything against Eamon Valder. He's kind of, he kind of laughs it off. Then we're hearing wolf howls from outside, which is a bit weird, a bit sinister. Then um, Egwene tries again and she, she directs the fire, the small fire at Perrin's bonds, his rope, and he breaks free. And then there's a really weird scene. Again, Perrin, Perrin's eyes change color. They start going gold and he starts growling, like making a weird animal sound. And Valda turns and looks at him. He, he looks freaked out, he's afraid. Was it? He says, by the light, and he drops the knife. And in that moment, Egwene picks it up and plunges it in the back of his, his neck here or his back. And we're not sure if it's a lethal wound or not. Anyway, they they escape, they run out of the tent and there are wolves everywhere. Their wolves are taking out the white cloaks, they're attacking them all. And Perrin says to her, don't worry, they won't attack us. For some reason he knows and they, they make their escape, they get out of there. Again, it's quite a gory scene. Back at the tower again and Stepin and Lan are together drinking tea. They're talking about the Aes Sedai, the wisdom and love and then we see Lan kind of waking up, all groggy, like he's been drugged. And he looks around, Stepin's not there. And he, he sees on the wall a display of short swords. One of the swords is missing. So he charges out of the room and runs upstairs. And he finds Stepin. He's got his back to him. He's kneeling down with his back to Lan. And Lan sees blood on the floor. And he, he's, he goes up to him and he, he realises he's killed himself. He's basically stabbed himself. Then we move to a kind of moving morning scene, kind of funeral scene, I guess, where they're all wearing white and Lan is really upset. He's, he starts banging his chest and they, they're all doing, they're all banging their chests. It's again, it's a, it's a kind of strange but weirdly moving scene. Good acting all around. And that's where the episode ends. Okay, that's it for my review of Wheel of Time, episode five, Blood Calls Blood. So, what did you think of it? Please leave a comment and let me know what you thought. And thanks so much for watching. I hope to see you in the next video. This is Grey from Wakizashi's Tea House, signing off. Matane! Wakizashi's Tea House. Please subscribe.